Well, hello. I am going to cover drainage with you. Uh, this is a, a very, very big topic, especially for the Houston area. We receive 50 plus inches a year, and um, what the way it usually comes down is in 30 minute to hour spurts, it will just, we'll get six, eight, nine plus inches in less than an hour. It's, it's crazy. It doesn't happen very many places in the United States. So we have to be very, very accurate in our drainage calculations, making sure that we handle this appropriately. Um, so let me just first start off with the different types of drains that you're going to be talking about. Um, the, the number one thing that you're going to walk up to when you go to meet people is they're going to say they have French drains installed. Um, don't correct them. 99% of people do not actually have French drains. It's just what they know drainage as. Um, area drains is what most people have. And this is kind of a, a simple example here of what an area drain is. It's a inlet catch basin here and you put it in the lawn and you grade the lawn to drain to one particular spot. Um, obviously in an existing yard that's hard so what you have to do is you have to find the low spots and put these catch basins in these low areas. There's different, uh, lots of different sizes um, of, of catch basins uh, that you can do so just make sure that, that you're pricing in the appropriate size. There's some square catch basins, some round. These are our most common and then we also use some concrete catch basins which look like this right here. And the reason why we like these concrete catch basins is that they have very large grates. Uh, the holes are very wide, so it allows um, larger debris to get in there and then go down the drainage without clogging it up. Those little tiny, these are very, very narrow slits. And so even grass clippings can easily clog up these catch basins and so it's just not that great. Um, there's lots of different types. There's the single outlet um, ones and then the double outlet so it'll go out the other side. And you'll notice here there's different types of this is the catch basin and then we have to put in a separate grate on top. We get to pick our grate. This is a flat grate. That's what this one is here. Um, and then you can choose a square grate. The difference between these two essentially is just a larger surface area for the water to get into. Um, it's still going in the same catch basin, but it's just a bigger inlet for that. Then we have our atrium grates. That's what these are here. They're raised up and it would fit right in here the same way. Um, obviously, you wouldn't want that in a lawn area because it, it'll just get damaged and broken every time you mow and it becomes a tripping hazard. But they're ideal for beds, for landscape beds. Um, mulch doesn't get clogged up in these near as easily mulch will like totally gather all the way around the edges but the open will, but the top will usually stay open so the flow into it is severely reduced when that happens but it it usually stays unclogged for much much longer than these guys right here um, so that's area drains that's the most common type of drainage that you're going to see in houston and we always use pvc pipe we don't use the corrugated pipe so. so the corrugated pipe, you see it's got these little ridges in it. Um, it comes in a lot of different sizes. The, the minimum size for any drainage, whether it's corrugated, PVC, or anything, is 4 inch. You see here, I mean, this has this 3 inch diameter pipe. I mean, you're really trying to be cheap if you're doing that. But the reason why we recommend 4 inch as a minimum is because of clogging. You need to make sure you have a large pipe that doesn't allow like mulch and other sediment to get clogged up in there as easily. How a corrugated pipe is beneficial, the reason why a lot of people like to use them and save money is because they can bend like this. PVC pipe obviously can't. You have to use individual fittings to get it to, to bend. Um, so because of these ridges, it allows it to, to, to turn any and snake around the yard however you need to. And then you just cut it and then you put in a little uh, basin or whatever you need for an inlet to, to drain to. Um, the, the drawback to these corrugated is the fact that they're extremely weak. This corrugated actually makes them very weak. You can actually almost, if you have a very strong hand, crush it with your hand. So after a period of time of, of 
three to ten years the weight of just the soil will eventually crush this pipe um, that's the number one drawback the number two drawback is that because of the corrugated the the ridges in there uh, the water flows much slower through there and then also to it catches sediment sediment is little bits of soil and dirt things like that they get caught in those ridges whenever the water is moving slow and so very slowly this pipe just fills up with dirt and then becomes clogged um, it gets to be very expensive you can call somebody like Roto-Rooter and they'll actually have a little uh, tool that they'll push down there and can clean out the pipe a garden hose cannot cannot let me repeat that a garden hose cannot clean out a NDS pipe. Um, it just, it, it, even regular drainage, it would take hours and hours to push all of that water down the pipe. It just, it just won't work. Um, the last drawback to this is that no matter how, because the pipe is flexible, it's extremely difficult to get NDS pipe totally flat. Um, so even if your guys dig the most perfect trench and it's a very smooth trench as you're burying that pipe it tends to uh, snake like wobble left and right up and down and the worst isn't even the left to right it's the up and down whenever you have the dips the up and the downs that slows down the water flow slows down the sediment it just slows everything down and you can try really hard to try to keep that pipe you got one guy holding the pipe down really really flat and you got another couple people gently packing the soil around the pipe and stuff like that but still I've seen it you just can't get that pipe totally flat on the ground so we never like to use this pipe unless it's just tying into a piece in the homeowner just any way we can we try to move the homeowner up to PVC pipe there's so many benefits to PVC pipe over that corrugated stuff um, let me move on to the next one so French drains this is about the only time that will somewhat recommend a homeowner to use a French drain system um, is I mean to use a corrugated pipe is whenever they're using the NDS French drain system the easy flow system it's a it's a great product it's very easy to use it's got this styrofoam around it and this sleeve so the way a French drain system is you dig this trench much wider than what's actually needed to be and then you put a pipe in the ground that is corrugated I mean sorry that is perforated so it allows water to flow into it um, as you can see here the way that these work here let me send you another picture okay you can see this this French drain system there's there's a number of different pictures here of, of French drain systems as a pipe gravel all the way around it and then the existing soil around that area there um, here's another one existing soil uh, gravel and then the pipe and you see it here again here existing soil gravel and then the pipe and the sock um, a French drain system has a pipe that's perforated meaning it's got little holes in it you can see the holes around this pipe here and then it's wrapped in a sock and it, it's the reason why you put this little filter around it is to prevent sediment and soil from getting into the drain into the pipe itself um, so that helps keep the pipe cleaner longer um, you need that sock in there the gravel is allows some sediment allows the water to flow into there faster is what the what the gravel does and then and then the pipe once the water finally reaches the pipe it's going to flow even faster and so um, water is going to take the path of least resistance so it's going to be moving here and then once it gets to the gravel it's going to move faster and then into the pipe it's going to take here so the path of least resistance is the way the water is going to take um, this is a this is a great diagram now there's this system this is manual uh, this is a little bit more expensive way to do it mainly due to labor because you have to excavate out a trench a much larger trench and then you backfill with a little bit of gravel then you put your pipe in then you backfill with even more gravel and then 
sometimes we'll leave it open and then sometimes we'll put a little layer of sod over it just so then that way you never see that that at all it can be done in different ways here's an example of the saw the grass growing over with french drain systems you should never see any inlets those catch basins that we were talking about you won't see any of those with a french drain system that's not the way they work all of there is trying to gather water that's underground so basically your soil is always soggy but you don't really have any surface water it's just it's just totally damp and moist underneath there and so you need to get rid of all that the best places that in Houston they work are along foundations you see this picture right along here um, if if we have homeowners that complain we've had so much rain in Houston before where it just rains and rains and rains and rains that water is actually continuously sitting around the foundation water will actually start seeping up from the ground floor I've seen people's wood floors uh, get ruined they've never actually had water rise up and over and into the house it actually comes up from the ground because we're, the water table has gotten so high that water will go up and ruin wood people's wood floors um, of course that takes months and months of non-stop rain which happened like during Harvey and stuff so that's what French drains are for um, NDS came up with a system that we like to use and this is the only time we use corrugated pipe and it's already pre-done we basically we dig the trench we drop this in connect them together and then we backfill a little bit of soil around it and we're all done what makes French drains so expensive is all the additional material and the fact that you have to haul away all of the old soil so it gets to be very very labor-intensive um, you're about double the linear foot on drainage um, price for French drain systems. But it's pretty rare that you need them, and they don't work very well in most soil conditions in Houston. So, channel drains are the next type of, of drainage system. And you can see here they've got lots of channel drains. So, a channel drain is it's a long trough, and it allows for it to catch water over a large amount of area um, so a channel drain system it works great in this type of situation so let's say you've got a slant on a uh, on a driveway and the driveway uh, the, the road is higher than the um, than the than the garage door and you've got water coming down towards the garage door you need to catch a large swath of water before it goes into the garage channel drains are just fantastic in these situations they're great around um, pools as well um, you're just you've got a very large area where you have to catch water and just an individual inlet won't do you need you need to catch it over a large span that's what channel drains are for they're also very expensive mainly due to the material cost you can get them done in plastic tops or even metal you can get decorative ornamental grates like this one here stainless steel um, there's lots of different types this one here is decorative in a leaf pattern and then there's lots of different sizes we never again never recommend to go anything under a um, three inches the minimum size of channel drain that I really recommend I don't recommend the little speed channels uh, the little one inch tiny channel drains they just these little guys here they just they get clogged up so quickly and you can't take the top off so you can't ever clean them out they basically they work for a very short period of time and then they're just worthless so get a larger one you can take off the the grate and clean them out super easy and keep your your drain system working so that's what's important how long is this going to last customers are investing a good amount of money you want to make sure you create a um, offer solution that's going to last them a very very long time so channel drains are great for those situations uh, before I was mentioning um, pipe diameter sizes let me kinda go through what that means and the different types of pipe that that we use um, so see here in this diagram this is a really good diagram when we say four inch uh, we are talking the OD which is outside diameter very important to note that that's the outside diameter um, 
So little side note, I don't know if you want to get this involved or not, but the, the heavier duty of the gauge, meaning that the thicker the wall for the pipe, the smaller the ID is, the inside diameter. So on a four inch schedule 40 pipe, it's still four inch on the outside, but because schedule 40 is one of the thickest gauges, it's not the thickest, you can still go schedule 80. And I know there's schedules above that, but in our landscaping world, schedule 80 is probably the thickest pipe you'll ever deal with. Um, the, the inside diameter just keeps shrinking. So it, it, we want to keep as much of an inside diameter as possible. That way we're allowing as much flow through the pipe as possible. Um, we only need it to be so thick. Um, electricians use uh, Schedule 80 pipe. It's, it's an extremely heavy duty pipe. The other thing too is that the heavier duty the pipe, the thicker the walls, the more expensive it is for the homeowner. So we try to find this balance of a pipe that's strong enough to hold up over a long, long period of time, but also not cost the homeowner an arm and a leg. Um, a four inch, the, the price difference between like NDS is around, uh, it's, it's around a dollar, dollar 20 and a foot uh, per, per linear foot. The, the cheapest PVC pipe is around a dollar a foot. You go to schedule 30, um, um, SDR 35, which is actually the pipe that we use. It's a very heavy duty pipe, but it's got a it's got a thin enough wall that it allows lots of water to flow through. It's 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 more. It's like a dollar fifty. It's under two dollars a foot. Um, then you go to Schedule 40, and you're talking several dollars a square foot. Then you go to Schedule 80, and you're talking. I mean, you're probably going to be talking about twenty dollars fifty. I mean, it's you're talking probably about ten bucks a linear foot for Schedule 80 pipe. Uh, for four inch it's it gets expensive so the prices increase I mean it's it's exponential how much it increases the heavier duty pipe you go um, and it's just overkill there's no reason to go that that thick so that's what we're talking about and we also never recommending going less than four inch for drainage ever 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 um, and six inch is 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 a very good drain Um, I forgot about sump pump systems. These are sump pump and dry well basins. These are very important. Um, this is an example of kind of a kit that you can get. Essentially, this will be stuck in the ground. You'll see, say, the very, very top, all of that's buried underground. And then you stick a, a, a pump down in there. And as you see this little float, this thing right here, it'll actually float up and uh, turn on and off the pump as needed. As the basin fills up with water, um, it will then activate the pump and have it drain out. It'll kick the water out to wherever you need to. Um, it's, it's, it's great for whenever yards, uh, whenever an area you're trying to drain is lower than where the outlet needs to be, um, or if, if it's just flat, if you just don't have enough slope. Um, we don't like doing half inch drainage, uh, like a half inch percent slopes, but that is the absolute bare minimum uh, that you can do. Um, so it, we, we prefer one inch at, at a minimum for our drain systems to, to kind of go from there. So that's what these are good for. Now do know there are different sizes and most of these pumps are actually pretty small. They will not... Um, keep up with a really really heavy rainstorm but they will they will catch up pretty darn quickly because they just never stop where the rain has lulls and highs the it does allow it to catch up um, all these what's great is you can stick this anywhere in a yard and then um, everything can kind of drain to it and it allows so you'll put this drain system out in the yard you can have four inch pipes coming from all over the yard. It doesn't matter what your drain system, what your yard, the slope looks like. It makes it great because these are so deep, you can get lots of slope to these guys and really get them to drain pretty quickly there. Um, and then you just use a little two inch pipe to discharge out to the street. Um, so that's what, that's what a, a sump pump system is good for. 
The next one is a flow well or dry well drainage system and kit. These are for homeowners that are looking to save money. They've got this puddle in the middle, so they've got a really large yard and they've got this puddle that's just always sitting there and they just can't ever seem to get rid of it. You can create essentially a holding tank. Each one of these tanks will hold about 120 gallons of water. Um, and then on top of it, you can even have these legs that go out and, and allow the water to, to drain out through them as well. But you can tie these in together. So each one of these will hold 120 gallons. You just dig a hole and you put this basin in there and there's no bottom on it. So it allows the water to get down into the soil faster. A lot of times in Houston, there's this, there's this thin layer of clay that just doesn't allow the water to drain down naturally. So if you can get down deep enough and allow that water to get there, it'll naturally go down into the soil faster. This is actually the best way for our earth um, to, to get the water back down into the system. So many of our properties are concreted. It doesn't allow the water to drain back down into our natural aquifers. Um, aquifers are where we get all of our water from um, for our area. We're starting to go to more surface water, which is beyond expensive. Uh, the mud districts around here charge the surface water tax and it causes your water bill to double overnight. So aquifer is all this, as you can see, it's where water naturally holds. There's, there's kind of gaps in the earth's um, uh, layers here and water will just kind of naturally hold in there. You see some of these are much larger than others, but essentially there's a whole underground system of water and it's really, really crazy. But because we're concreting all of our surfaces nowadays, water can't naturally get down to it. Um, so essentially it's just flowing out our streams and our, our uh, gullies that we have here and then out to the ocean um, and then it becomes worthless to us as people. Um, it fills our oceans, that's great, but um, the, the aquifers are what we need to live. And what's really great about the earth, it just has an amazing system, is that when the water naturally flows down through all this dirt, believe it or not, the dirt is a filter. It filters out all of the, the poisons and all the different stuff that we have in our, in our water systems that we pollute our land with. And um, Mother Earth takes care of us that way and just it cleans the water. So then the water in the aquifer is, is really, really clean typically unless we're just really, really polluting it. But by the time it usually gets down into this part, it's pretty darn filtered out. Um, and so how we get it is, I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's a little tiny pump. This would be an example of a well. So we will dig a hole down a channel and shove a pipe down in there, you know, three, four, 500 feet deep if you have to, however deep you have to go to get the water and pull it back up for all of these houses to use. The drawback is, is these aquifers are not getting replenished um, just because of all the concrete and all the different surfaces that we have. And so they're running dry. Um, so we really need to make sure that whenever we can, these flow well drywall systems are just fantastic. They, it's, it's just a little tiny dent, but it really is cool in what it does. And you can tell the homeowners how they are helping um, Earth by doing this. When we put the water back into our uh, gutters on the streets, it literally is ending up in the Gulf within, you know, a few weeks. It just, it just goes straight down there. There's no chance for it to get down into our aquifer system when we pump it out to the, uh, to the streets. So very cool. What I think is a very cool fun fact, um, uh, for people and educating people in why we don't necessarily want to pump every bit of water out as quickly as possible. Um, so hopefully that helps. I think I covered all the different parts of, of what we do. The next one will be in how we dr design our drainage systems.